Hallelujah. Can you take, take a deep reflection on your life and uh, try to articulate the most, what you consider to be the most impossible thing? You must realize that if God gives you a call, for instance, what God will call you to accomplish is something that you don't have the natural capacity to accomplish. So even in the body of a call, God is trying to take you outside of the box of your perceived limitation. And it must be understood that the tower of the greatest towers of bondage are in the mind of men. So what can you be at liberty to exercise your mind? And what, what do you consider impossible? Because the Bible says that I have the capacity to do all things through Christ. There is a renewal of mind that is required to accommodate things that you believe you are incapacitated to deliver. But Christ in you can equip you with what it takes to operate in a dimension that you feel you are not naturally suited for. So the greatest places of bondages are found in the minds of men. It must be understood that I was born a stammerer, could not speak. And your pastor today is, was a stammerer. And through Christ, I've seen how God can take you beyond your physical limitations and bring you to a place where you survive by grace. The elasticity of grace is immense. It's something that you cannot quantify, something that you cannot foretell. I would like you to pray a prayer of release that every mindset that has kept me in captivity all these years, I go beyond their control. I am going to be everything that God has ordained me to be. I am going to be everything that God has ordained me to be. Because with me, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. The more you say it, the more you believe it. With me, nothing shall be impossible. He makes grace available so that we have, by reason of the supply of the Spirit of God, the Spirit of might comes upon us and gives us abilities that are not inherent with us, abilities that are supplied into our space by the Holy Ghost. with men these things might be impossible but not with God for with God all things are possible all things are possible with God all things are possible with God all things are possible with God in the name of Jesus I receive grace to go beyond my limitations I receive grace to be capable of everything that God has spoken about my life
in the mighty name of Jesus. So we saw yesterday how that strongholds referred to the walls of containment and these walls of containment that Satan builds around our lives are lies. So Satan uses lies to contain us. And as long as your, your perspective about a matter is built on lies, you are contained in Satan's invincible prison. So we say that lies are the walls that form strongholds. And anytime someone wants to be set at liberty, he needs to go for an adventure of truth. And the truth of God comes with light. And the light that comes by the word of God begins to shine upon your mind. And then suddenly you discover that the walls were not as strong as Satan intended them to be. But because these walls were not built instantaneously, they will not be dethroned instantaneously. It will be coming off block by block block by block block by block until it becomes a dwarf fence and after a while you will find out that you can jump over it you will find out that you can you can somersault over it and when when that time comes satan himself will send workers to pack the, the, the rest because he, he has other building projects that he needs to commission he's short of supply short of resources short of manpower so he can't have you having blocks that cannot contain you. There is a vicious circle of lies that have been used to contain men, contain nations, contain generations, contain families, contain clans. But part of what we're going to do today is demolition. <laughs> demolition. You may be seated. God bless you in Jesus' mighty All right, I just want to give us, um, yesterday uh, we saw a few conditions, a few states of the mind, and uh, we spoke about the right mind, we so spoke about the sober mind, did we speak about the sound mind, we spoke about the spiritual mind, we spoke about the anxious mind. We spoke about the carnal mind. And we spoke about the worthless mind. And finally, in that category, you can add the oppressed mind. The oppressed mind. That's the kind of thing that happened to Saul when an evil spirit tormented him and he needed the ministry of a minstrel, even David, to give him temporary relief. His mind was oppressed. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. He said, there is no vacuum in the spirit. So the moment the spirit of God was withdrawn, another spirit took over and it would take the ministry of David as a minstrel to give him relief. This is the picture of an oppressed man. And just in case you followed the tape that we played out yesterday, the testimony of the South African pastor, the diagnosis of his condition was that he was suffering from an oppressed mind. You see, the situation behind an oppressed mind is that there is a priesthood of darkness that has been set up and enchantment has been done. What enchantment is, is to give instructions to demons. So instructions have been given to demons to speak into someone's head. Those voices come so compelling, so strong, and so domineering. That is the back end 
of an oppressed man. And that was, you know, what that pastor in South Africa was suffering from, uh, whose tape we played to our hearing yesterday. So when you meet someone with an oppressed mind, it is more of a spiritual matter and you must spend time praying with the person. Spend time praying with the person. Spend time praying with the person. And you also must encourage the person to use his own faith to rebel against the words that are being superimposed upon his mind. So an oppressed mind. That's number eight. So those are the different postures of mind that a man can have. All right. So we'll take our golden scripture again. It's the reference point for all of these issues that we are raising. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. For we, verse 3, 4, and 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down of imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So I made a list of a few strongholds that we will need to deal with and the extent to which we are bound by these strongholds is relative. The first is fear. Now, I have a few definitions of the strongholds here. Fear is yielding to the reality of the possibility of danger instead of trusting God. Yielding to the reality of the possibility of danger instead of trusting in God. Fear is a spirit, all right? The moment the spirit of fear begins to advance its course in the mind of a man, he begins to accommodate the possibility of danger. That's what fear does. And I've seen so many people that have been bound by fear. Someone got admission, got scholarship, 100% scholarship, to go study in the United States of America. He's an excellent student, excellent par excellence, student par excellence. And he got this um, scholarship to go study in the United States. Then a strange fear came upon him. The fear could not be understood. The fear could not be explained. And on the account of that fear, he forfeited that admission. And uh, after the whole process of the admission had shut down and closed. The fear left him. And he has been telling the tale of his regret ever since. That is a stronghold. I don't know who is in this congregation, maybe on site or online, that has been battling with a secret fear in your heart. That is a stronghold. And those are the items that are going to suffer the weight of our demolition program for this evening. We are trusting God to cast them down in this place today. This is a theater for demolition. When you want to do serious demolition, you need to bring a caterpillar. Caterpillar is equipped with what it takes to destroy. So we are going to be going by the caterpillar of the word of God and we are going to confront that stronghold and we trust God that it will be uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ. A second identifiable very common stronghold that has taken over so many people and is a result for disfavor is anger. Anger. A strong emotion that you feel or think 
when someone has behaved in an unfair or cruel or unacceptable way against you. A strong emotion that you feel when someone has behaved in an unfair, cruel, or unacceptable way towards you. It's a, it's a response uh, using the tools of the flesh. Uh, the other day, we saw a young man that was angry at the world, not because anything happened to him. He wakes up in the morning angry. Not because there was anyone that behaved in an unfair manner. Not because there was anyone that behaved in a cruel manner. And uh, when we were trying to help the young man, we were able to, during the counseling session, we were able to connect him to the fact that that was how angry his father was. And what he was experiencing was an inheritance, a transfer of a stronghold. There was a demon that was regulating him using the um, stronghold of anger a stronghold of anger and it doesn't matter where he is very intelligent he can be in the midst of an interview he's looking for a job and then he gets angry right before the panel the panel knows that this guy has the intellectual property that is needed to prosecute the job that is being ad advertised but because of this anger he falls out of favor again and again and again. And you know, an angry person will always look outside that what is wrong is outside. These are deceiving parameters that the devil puts in place in order to keep us perpetually bound. And just in case you are here, bound by the spirit of anger, we are going to touch it this night in the name of Jesus Christ. I've seen parents that have transmitted the spirit of depression to their children because of an unbridled dimension of the spirit of anger. If you are a victim here of any form of pressure that has, you know, dealt with you and is responsible for how you were shaped, we are trusting God for demolition in the name of Jesus Christ. Then we also have depression. Depression is another stronghold, allowing the act of abandonment to instill a feeling of worthlessness, allowing the act of abandonment to instill a feeling of worthlessness. Maybe in your family you were abandoned. You had genuine cases, genuine troubles, and the people that were supposed to help you, that had the means to help you, that had the capacity to help you, decided to relegate you to the background. And in the midst of that shadow, a spirit of depression was able to manipulate it itself and find a place in your mind. So you have been living under the influence of that spirit and your estimation of yourself, no matter how advantaged you are, is that you are worthless. And I've met many people like that. Very intelligent people, sharp people, gifted people, but performance zero. Because the people have come to a point where they, 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 they believe there is no need to strive for that because of a sense, an utter sense of hopelessness that has besieged their mind. We also have another stronghold that is built around abuse. Anyone that is in this place that experienced any form of abuse whatsoever while you were growing up, something you could not share with your parents, uh, but it affected your life. You had to keep it secret even though you were not taught how to keep it secret. But it was shameful, so you felt it was not to be exposed. And Satan shows up under such circumstances and he builds strongholds around the secrecy of the matter that you are trying to keep from coming into lamb light. He builds uh, 
a stronghold of res resentment. There is an inner bitterness that has found its place in the human heart, which is occasioned by a disadvantage, is occasioned by an abuse that took place at some point, and it was not properly handled. There was no pathway for ventilation, and it became a stronghold of resentment. There is nothing you do to that person or about that person that excites the person. The person has gone beyond the possibility of excitement because there's an ingrained inner resentment that sits deeply on the person's heart. And even though you cast out the spirit, the fact that the structures of resentment have already been built as an everlasting stronghold in the person's mind, in the absence of the physical personality called the demon, uh, the control and the influence of that demon is still rooted in that structure of resentment that is built in the mind. You know, we said the other day that you can cast out devils, and that is instant, but you see, you cast down strongholds because it took time and convincing to build. Satan will bring theories. Then you will accept his theories. Then he puts a block there. He will bring postulations. Then you accept his postulations. Then he puts another block there. Then he will bring hypotheses. Then you accept his hypothesis. Then he puts another block there. He will also bring philosophies. And you accept his philosophies. He puts another block there. Before you know it, that's how you think. That's your vista. That's your window. That's your outlet through which you view the world. The walls that Satan has built in your space. And it doesn't matter how much favor, how much blessing God causes to collocate around you. Your life will be regulated by these strange invincible walls that Satan has built in your mind. We will need to uh, explore them so that we can attack them.